All right, so today I'm going to summarize for you Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. Uh, this book is also called The Children's Crusade, so if you can't find it under the Slaughterhouse Five title, it's also called The Children's Crusade. So, the way I'll break down the story, I'm going to break it down as the beginning, one part, the middle, separate part, and the end, totally different part. So, the beginning of our story, we learn this story is about a man named Billy Pilgrim who is a chaplain's assistant in World War II. So a chaplain's assistant is a bit of a joke position or joke title in the war. You're not given a weapon, you're not properly outfitted for battle and everything like that, but you're still sent to the front lines. Now, Billy has come unstuck in time. And uh, Billy has the ability to jump m body or not body, mind and spirit and soul from every in every point in his life, from his birth to his death and everything in between, and he does it throughout the entire story. And we learn really quickly that um, Billy does this uncontrollably, and he doesn't realize what it is until later on when he's quote unquote abducted by the trial Famidorian aliens and taken to an alien zoo on a different planet. Now, all that might sound crazy to you, but once I finish explaining to you the story, it'll make perfect sense. So Billy, like I said, Billy has come unstuck in time. And at the beginning of our story, we learn that Billy has survived the Battle of the Bulge in World War II, and he's now in Luxembourg, Germany, wandering behind enemy lines. And uh, prior to us being put in that moment, we learn that at some point in his life, Billy will be in a plane crash and he'll survive. And uh, his family thinks that his stories of the Trial Famidorians and him being able to jump into the past and the future, they think they're all delusions and uh, effects of both the plane crash and his time overseas in World War II. And uh, Billy ends up having issues with his family. He's a successful optometrist, but he has issues with his family and with his brain and things like that. So, um, the Tralfamidorian aliens, we learn a little bit about them at the beginning of the story. We learn that they view time differently from humans because they can see fourth dimensionally. And um, so they have the ability to see all time at one given moment. And that's how they explain to Billy that he has the ability to jump in time. And they explain that the way people see time, it's as if you can see one section of the Rocky Mountains at one time, but they can see the entire Rocky Mountains at one time. So we can only look at one spot, but they can see everything at one time. It's a little hard to grasp, but it makes sense. So what happens is, Billy Pilgrim, chaplain's assistant, laughing stock of the, of the military, is behind enemy lines in Luxembourg, Germany. No weapon, not properly outfitted, He's broken shoes, he's hobbling around, and he's in a group of four men. Him, two scouts, and a man by the name of Roland Weary. Makes up a group of four. Now these four men have been wandering behind enemy lines for days and days. They're uh, thought to be either missing in action or dead. Um, and uh, as I say, they're thought to be dead. Uh, throughout the story, Billy Pilgrim... Uh, or Kurt Vonnegut for that matter. Anytime somebody dies or there's a talk of death, afterwards he puts this line, so it goes. And essentially that's just to say uh, that death is inevitable, death is going to come, so why fear it? And uh, it's sort of like a mock to death, you know, uh, that kind of thing. It's just, well, he died, so it goes. It happens, that type of thing. So they're wandering behind enemy lines, presumed to be dead, so it goes. And they're wandering around, and Billy's hobbling behind them. Uh, the man, Roland Weary, well, I say man loosely, he's an 18-year-old child, and as is Billy Pilgrim himself. Uh, that's why this book is also called The Children's Crusade, because they send children to war all the time. Uh, so Roland Weary, he's a very violent, violent man. Um, he's always showing Billy, like, his knives, and always talking about killing people, and we learn very quickly that Roland Weary is pretty broken himself. 
excuse me, I'm sorry. And so they wander around, and Billy's always sort of tagging along behind the group. They sort of drag him along with them. The two scouts and Roland Weary, that is. And uh, through the entire time they're wandering behind the enemy lines at Luxembourg, Billy occasionally has those memory flashes, or future flashes, whatever you'd like to call them. And he'll sort of freeze where he is, and then he'll be gone off somewhere else. And... Later on in the story, it begins to be a little bit, a little bit of a problem. So they're wandering down a street, and they start to get shot at. The three men, being the two scouts and Roland Weary, they dive into a ditch. But Billy stands in the middle of the road and is getting shot at, but doesn't go anywhere. So Roland Weary is cussing at him from the ditch. Get in the ditch. Get in the ditch. And he's cussing and screaming at him. Uh, Billy snaps out of it, jumps in the ditch, and they're down there. And then finally, they leave. And later on. The two scouts and Roland Weary don't realize Billy has frozen behind a tree and is in the middle of a memory flash. And Billy's behind the tree and he's having a flash uh, later on after the war and he's an optometrist in his middle age. And uh, Billy is there and we learn that he has issues with his family. His daughter, Barbara, uh, she's trying to take care of him. She thinks Billy's sick and he has issues with his brain because of the plane crash, like I said. And... He may be may or not be suffering from post traumatic stress because of World War Two. And so he's a successful optometrist. We learn that quickly. He has a nice house. He has a car. He had ch children and a wife. And they live quite fruitfully um, off of his optometry practice. But like I said, he has his issues with his family now. And finally, uh, this whole time Billy's in this memory flash, Roland Weary comes back to get Billy and is slamming Billy's head against a tree to try to get him to come back because he sees he's standing there and just out of it. And Billy wakes up, snaps out of his memory, and just tells him to just go on without me. Don't take me with you. Uh, Roland Weary just like cusses at him and just brings him along. And they end up in a, a riverbank, a frozen riverbank. Roland Weary, Billy, and the two scouts are end up in a frozen riverbank. So then finally they're all talking and um, this whole time, Roland Weary and the two scouts have developed a sort of a friendship, and they call themselves the Three Musketeers. And eventually, the two scouts decide they're going to leave Roland Weary and Billy Pilgrim. They're just going to ditch them. So they leave, and this whole time, Billy has been standing in the bottom of the riverbank on the ice, uh, having a hallucination that he's standing in a ballroom with socks on, and he's skating on the floor like it's ice. So Billy's down in the middle of the the riverbank on ice, sliding around on the ice, playing around. And Roland Weary's just lost what he thinks is his two friends, and he blames Billy. So he goes down and he starts beating Billy up, kicking him and punching him and beating on him. And finally he gets Billy on the ice, and Billy is sort of convulsing, and it sounds like laughter. And so uh, Roland walks behind him, and he's about to kick him in his back and break his spine. And that's when, from on top of the ridge, they had been hearing sounds prior to this. And uh, so finally they realize there's four German soldiers and a hunting German shepherd standing on top of the ridge. So Roland Weary looks up and stops. They see, the, they see that they're up there. They get up and walk to the top of the hill. And then they're captured by the four German soldiers. And they take all their belongings. They take... Uh, Roland Weary's knife and they search Billy Pilgrim for weapons the only thing he had on him being a chaplain's assistant the only thing he had on him was a pencil about that long so they take all their stuff and there was a boy with them the German soldiers that is a young boy uh, Billy describes him as a beautiful boy uh, he had blonde hair blue eyes your basic Aryan specimen being a Nazi soldier in World War Two, and they take Roland Weary's combat boots and give them to the boy and they give Roland Weary the boy's clogs so then at this point they all are now captured prisoners of war and what ends up happening was the two soldiers that the two scouts that left Roland and Billy they ended up getting shot and killed shortly after they left them so it goes now the two bo the two boys Roland and Billy are captured and they take them to a little bit of a pit stop in a house where other prisoners are and then uh, they're taken there 
and they're told to sit down and they sit down and Billy falls asleep and he has another flash forward to after the war as an optometrist and we learn again we get to see the problems Billy has with his daughter and with his family as a result of uh, the damage to his brain possibly sustained in that plane crash that I talked about earlier or maybe just post-traumatic stress from the war and we get to see early on that this war uh, has affected Billy and it's changed a lot of the things and in, uh, in his life and caused issues later on in his life so then later on Billy wakes up one of the German soldiers kick him in, kicking him in his foot telling him to wake up so he wakes up and they start to move along so finally they're taken to a, a giant railroad station and where all the American prisoners of war are being processed there's tens of thousands of soldiers there and um, they're taken there and they're processed they're put in box cars and they're gonna be shipped off and uh, Billy is in a car with a bunch of privates and on the way there they had to walk miles and miles and miles and Roland Weary was wearing those clogs and his feet were all torn up and bleeding and getting destroyed by those clogs so uh, later on they get there and they're finally in the boxcars and they're separated and they start to leave and they're getting taken to a prison camp off in Germany and then they close out the beginning uh, section by saying that uh, Billy Pilgrim is going to talk about when he was abducted by the Charles Lamadorians and that's where the beginning of the story ends and the middle begins.